Welcome to the February issue of the Journal of Vascular Surgery. We have an excellent lineup of papers for the month and would like to highlight four of them. The first paper is by Ramney and colleagues from Duke and is entitled Long-Term Results of Endovascular Repair for Descending Thoracic Aortic Aneurysms. It reports on their institution's experience with 192 thoracic aortic aneurysms and the early and long-term outcomes of patients who have undergone TVAR since it was first approved in 2005. With a mean follow-up of almost six years, they report that the long-term survival is 46% and the freedom from aortic death was 96%. Only 7% of patients required an in intervention for endoleak and none required open thoracic aortic surgery post-TVAR. The authors conclude that TVAR has been established as the treatment of choice for descending thoracic aortic aneurysms. The next paper by Adkar and, and colleagues from Duke entitled Low Mortality Rates Following Endovascular Aortic Repair Expands Use to High Risk Patients reports on NISQIP data from 2005 to 2013 of approximately 25,000 patients undergoing EVAR that were both high risk in 46% and low risk in 54%. They found that the 30-day mortality of 1.7% in high risk patients was much lower than had been previously reported in the EVAR2 trial and that the major factor that increased procedural risk by threefold was renal insufficiency. Renal insufficiency had a greater impact on operative mortality than cardiac or pulmonary insufficiency. The authors concluded that the marked reduction in operative mortality in high-risk patients undergoing EVAR should lead to selective expansion of the indication for EVAR in high-risk patients. The third paper highlighted this month cryopreserved arterial allografts for in situ reconstruction of abdominal aortic native or secondary graft infection by Ben Ahmed in France reports on their institution's experience with 71 cryopreserved allografts implanted for aortic graft infections and for primary aortic infections. They use locally cryopreserved allograft, different from US allografts per preserved commercially in patients with a variety of indications who had their repairs performed in line. They found a 17% 30-day mortality and that diabetes and an ASA4 classification of patients had worse long-term outcomes with five anastomotic ruptures at 45 months and a primary allograft patency of 93%. The authors concluded that aortic infection patients are high risk have significant risk for recurrent allograft rupture, but an acceptable long-term survival when the initial graft infection is eradicated and when revascularization can be accomplished. A paper by Soden and co-authors entitled Black Patients Present with More Severe Vascular Disease and a Greater Burden of Risk Factors Than White Patients at Time of Major Vascular Intervention is the editor's choice for paper of the month. Using data from the VQI, or Vascular Quality Initiative, they report on over 76,000 patients who were treated for vascular disease, including carotid, aneurysmal, and peripheral arterial disease from 2009 to 2014. They address the racial inequalities in vascular disease management by region of the United States. Among patients with vascular disease during that time period, 14% were black, and the authors show that black men present with more uncontrolled risk factors and more advanced disease, and they receive worse post-procedure risk factor modification for their vascular disease. In all areas of the U.S., it also shows that black women are seen earlier and with less severe disease burden than black men. The paper is accompanied by a very thoughtful commentary by Bill Flynn, in which he discusses the implications of the paper and the underlying problem for black patients with vascular disease, which is overall access to health care in all regions of the United States. 
We hope that you will enjoy reading not only the papers highlighted here today, but also the other papers in the February issue of the Journal of Vascular Surgery. Happy New Year, and we hope that you enjoy reading the JVS this month. Thank you.